Coming up on the paper talk today, we're talking about Lissandro Martinez, the severity of his injury. Do we actually know anything about it? Also, Rasmus Hoyland isn't resting on his laurels. He's happy scoring, but he wants more, which is one I want to hear. Plus, we'll have a couple of other stories as well. Let's check it out. Jay here for Stretford Paddock. This is the paper talk. As you can see, I'm outside Old Trafford and the weather is quite mild, to be honest with you. As a precaution, I'd take your parkers if you've got them. A uh, few stories to get through, mostly focusing on the morning after the afternoon before Manchester United beating West Ham 3-0. It feels strange, doesn't it, talking about a relatively comfortable Manchester United win, but there's always a flying ointment in the with Manchester United. We don't do things easily. It's never just a happy, contented day. There has to be a bit of drama, a bit of disappointment, and that comes in the form of the injury to Lissandro Martinez. I've said it before, I've said it countless times, and I know I'm not alone, so I'm not trying to act like Mr. Insightful, but for me, he is our most important player under Eric Ten Hag, and to see him have that injury yesterday was pretty devastating. Now, we don't know the severity of it, We've had lots of different quotes during the rounds. Diogo Delo sent him a message on Instagram. We saw that Eric Ten Hag was speaking about it. He said he, you know, he was very sad. It was very bad for him. He called it, called it a personal disaster, I think was one of the words that he used. But he did say, we don't know the diagnosis yet. We have to wait and see in the coming days. There's a lot of speculation and there's a lot of analysis going on. I've been doing the rounds on, on, online, trying to find anyone who can give us any information. There was a, there's a doctor called Brian Suterer, who's an American doctor who does analyse his injuries. And he did a quite a good piece that I've put as a community post where he was analysing the nature of the injuries, what he thinks it is. But the fact is, you don't know. You can't tell until you've had that scan, until you've looked at it, until you've had that proper diagnosis. And as of yet, we haven't had that. So whilst Eric Ten Hag's obviously feeling it, and Diogo Dolo and Lissandro Martinez, and others are obviously, be, well, Lissandro Martinez obviously feeling it, but his teammates and the manager are feeling it, we don't know for definite just how long he could be out for. He could be out for a short amount of time. If it's not that severe, it could be like one or two weeks. If it is an ACL, which is what everyone's fearing, like, please, dear God, don't let it be a crucial um, ligament injury, then we could be talking about his season being over and potentially the beginning of next season. But I don't want to speculate too much and I don't want to go all sort of doom and gloomy or overly optimistic because the fact of the matter is we don't know. We've got a few quotes. No one can know until you get that diagnosis, which is what Eric Ten Hag has said as well. So as soon as we hear anything, it'll be up on our socials. We'll keep you posted, obviously, and pray for Lissandro Martinez. That's all I can say on that one. Uh, there was some positive news though yesterday, obviously, with a nice 3-0 win and goals for Rasmus Hoyland and Alejandro Ganacho. Ganacho mocking Mohamed Kudos with his celebration, it seems. Kudos did the similar celebration when he scored against Manchester United early on in the season, I think it was. And uh, Alejandro Ganacho sitting on those advertising boards. I think he knew what he was doing, didn't he? It's a bit of a coincidence. It's the first time I've ever seen him do that celebration and he happens to do it against West Ham in front of the player that did it against us earlier this season. But made a great picture, didn't it? Him, Kobe Mainu and Rasmus Hoyland all sat on those advertising boards. When you see pictures like that, when you see players like that, when you see performances like we saw yesterday, it does give you a little bit of optimism and hope for the future. I know this season has been borderline disastrous. I mean, we went into this season... Last campaign, we finished top th top three, we finished third. We won a trophy, got to an FA Cup final. I mean, there was lots of reasons to be optimistic. This season, we've had so many bad results, I've lost count of them. We're sort of now battling for top four when, before the season kicked off, we were hoping, I was certainly hoping that top four would be almost a certainty and maybe we could have aspirations of not winning a title, but being in that conversation of just sort of maybe having a little bit of a title challenge dabble. Got nowhere near that, did we? And at one point, it looked like we were going to be closer to a relegation battle than a title uh, battle. But got our act together a little bit, and it looks like we can get that top four spot. It's not going to be easy, and we've still got a long way to go. But when you look at the young players we've got, the fact that Kobe Mainu seems like the real deal, the fact that Rasmus Hoyland, who I'll get to in a minute, has started banging him in in the Premier League to go with the goals he was scoring in the Champions League as well. And we know what he's capable of anyway. Plus Alejandro Ganacho, who's just an ama uh, amazingly talented teenager. You look at that, you look at the fact that we've now got football people, it seems, in charge of football in decisions. Plus we've got the Glazers hopefully being edged out. Um, I say hopefully because we don't know, but 
they've got fewer shares now than they, they had a few months ago. So I think that's a positive personally, especially when you look at Ineos, the noises they're making. Then maybe there is a little bit of optimism there, a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. It's, it's hard for me to get too carried away as a Manchester United fan. We're saying, oh, well, you know, we might get top four and we've got some good youngsters because obviously I'm old enough to remember when we were dominating the league. But I just think there's little green shoots there that it might not be as bad as it was, or we thought it was, a little while ago. Um, just a couple of other stories to get through. Rasmus Hoyland, he was doing the rounds this, uh, after the great game, as you'd expect, doing the media rounds, talking about his goal. He said it's a big achievement to get double figures for such a big club. But he says he's not done. He says, I'm hungry for more. I want to score more goals, get more wins, and uh, move more up the table. So he's not resting on his laurels. He's saying the right things. He wants more, and I want him to get more. And I think he'll get it as well. When you look at the, the amount of goals he scored recently, I think is it about four in the last four or something in the Premier League? He obviously scored quite a few in the Champions League. He's hit that double figures now. And I always think that's a bit of a, a benchmark for an attacker, for a striker, when you get to double figures. That shouldn't be the, the, the sort of the maximum. Shouldn't be going, I've got double figures, I can put my feet up now. When you're at Manchester United and you are the main striker, you've got to be aiming higher. And he is aiming higher. He says he's hungry for more. He wants more goals, he wants more points, he wants to keep moving up that table. So he's not resting on his laurels, and that's good to see. And I think when you see the fact he's just turned 21, literally, it was his birthday yesterday, happy belated birthday to you, Rasmus Hoyland, then there's a lot of reasons to think, OK, he's broke his duck in the Premier League, he's, he's in a bit of form, he's still only a young player, he's finally getting a bit more service. Although I will say this, look, some of the goals he's got, especially the one yesterday, that wasn't down to the service he got, that was down to him. He created that chance, yes, Casemiro did well to get the ball, but he created that chance. It was a well-taken goal, a superb finish as well. So you've got to give the kid credit. And long may it continue. A couple of other stories to mention as well. There's a story in the Manchester Evening News coming, uh, I think, via Portugal, that Bruno Fernandes is wanted by Al Hilal in Saudi Arabia. They're looking at him potentially in the summer. I don't think that's going to happen. I've said this a million times. I think Bruno Fernandes will stay at Manchester United. Maybe he goes to Saudi Arabia when he's in his mid to late 30s. I certainly don't think he's going now. He's far too young and he's far too talented. No disrespect to the Saudi League. I know they have got Cristiano Ronaldo, but let's have it right. They can't even keep hold of Jordan Henderson, so they're certainly not going to get Bruno Fernandes. Let's just get real. Uh, not anytime soon. Anyway, in my humble opinion, get involved in the chat and the comments if you disagree or if you agree. You don't have to argue with me. Also, Mason Greenwood. It's worth mentioning because whenever Mason Greenwood does something or is involved in something, scores a goal or whatever, it is a hot topic. It is covered in the papers. It is covered on social media. And it's worth us mentioning. He scored for Getafe a penalty as well. So there's just a little bit of intrigue going on with Mason Greenwood. There was an incident with Jude Bellingham. There's always this sort of talk and reports that maybe Ineos might be willing to revisit the conversation with him. Maybe they won't be. We don't fully know. It's a bit like Lissandro Martinez's injury. No one really knows quite what's going to go on with Mason Greenwood. I just know that every time he does score like he did this weekend, people start going, oh, we're getting back or he's going to come back. We just don't know, do we? It's a conversation that needs to be had. We know there's interest from Barcelona as well. So it's not like he's without suitors. Maybe the club look at it and go, homegrown player, FFP, can help us out by selling him and just ends that headache. The only other argument might be a bit of FOMO if we do let him go is he going to carry on scoring goals the issue isn't his footballing ability though with Mason Greenwood we know what the issue is it's what went on off the pitch as well so we don't need to go into that whole debate I'm sure you're fully aware of it all I'm going to leave it there we are going to be back later on today with the Paddock Podcast myself Joe Smith and Ronaldo Brown as always so make sure you're subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on that want to get to 750,000 subscribers by the end of the season and with your support we'll get there easily I've been Jay Moy this has been the Paper Talk outside a pretty mild but slightly breezy Old Trafford, thanks for watching.